If you struggle with managing risk, I really hope that this video is exactly what you've been looking for. I know that from my experience that risk management was one of the biggest issues, one of the bad habits that I had to break. And even to this day, it's still something that I struggle with from time to time. But I really hope that what we talk about today gets you one step closer to your overall goal. And if it does, please consider dropping a thumbs up and subscribing if you feel like I earned it. I'm going to start sharing my screen and the platform that I'm going to be using today is Webull. It's the platform that I use every single day during my live trading sessions. And it's the one that I personally love. If you want to download Webull, I want to be open with you guys. It's the first link down below. It is an affiliate link. So if you use my link, you'll earn up to 12 free shares just for signing up and having an initial deposit of five bucks. I will get one free share. With that being said, let's jump right into it. I want to talk about an OCO bracket. There's two things that every trader, in my opinion, should take into consideration before they actually take a trade. And I think that I don't, like I think everyone could agree on this. You should have a trade plan and if you don't that's going to be the first thing that you need to begin to work on, right? Where do you plan to buy? Where do you plan to sell for a profit? And where do you plan to manage risk? Now it's great to have a trade plan. We've created tools and free resources like our risk calculator that allows you to be able to plug and play with whatever stock it is that you have the intention of investing in or trading with. But we all know that planning something doesn't mean that you follow through with proper execution. So what is an order type that you can use every single time that you choose to take a trade? Now on Webull, once you have yours all set up, you can click under the trade. Market's closed today, so I'm not going to be able to execute this trade. But you can click right on over here on the three, uh, I think it's three dash lines. Uh, and you just click on create an advanced order. Super, super simple. So with that being said, this creates an OTO primary. So you can click on this and you can switch it to an OCO. So an OTO, uh, again, I have it right on over here for you guys, is the one triggers the other. Uh, the other one would be OCO, which is one cancels the other. Uh, ideally, the same thing. The, the really cool thing about the OTO is that you have a primary order of, hey, I want to buy two shares or whatever it is of whatever it is that you want to buy. I have Apple stock right now, so uh, that's why I'm putting it here for you guys. So let's say that you want to buy whatever stock it is that you want to. You put the ticker here. It should already plug and play this for you. So you're going to buy whatever amount of shares, right? You're going to form your plan first on that risk calculator. And you're like, okay, I want to buy 100 shares. Perfect. I want to buy 100 shares at a limit price of um, you know, whatever it's trading at 214.29. That's currently what it's at. Let's say that I just want to buy at 214. Great. We all do fine with buying, but it's about the execution of taking profits or managing risk. And please let me know, right? Because that is a very common issue for a lot of people. They don't take profits or they don't manage risk appropriately. Now you should have no excuses because it doesn't matter if you're a day trader or a swing trader. You can set these order types that once you place them, instead of them canceling out at the end of the day, you can do GTC, which means good till canceled, meaning that this order type will not cancel until it actually gets triggered or you cancel it yourself. So the really cool thing about this is that, okay, I'm going to put my limit order to buy 100 shares of Apple at this exact price. Cool. Well, Ricky, what exactly does that do for me? I'm just buying Apple at $214 per share. Exactly. Right. But now we're also simultaneously going to create two different orders. One is going to be an order in case Apple continues to uptrend. Let's say according to my trade plan, uh, my trade plan is to sell Apple at $220 per share. Cool. That's going to be my take profit. Makes sense, right? And then again, I can do this. I can do like a, just the stop. I plan to manage and or cut losses with my 100 shares. If I see that the price falls below, let's say 212, right? So then you can plug that in. And that means that, okay, if the market price falls below $212 per share, this secondary order will trigger. So the first thing that has to happen is my primary primary order has to get filled. You have to first buy those shares. And then once you do, these two shares uh, or these two orders will still be active at the same time. You will see that there will be a limit order to sell at $220 per share. And there will be a stop 
order, which means that it's pretty much like a stop loss, a stop order that if it falls below $212 per share at market price, it will sell your 100 shares. And then again, you can just go GTC. So now you review your order. Okay, is this what I want to do? And then you go ahead and click place order. Obviously, I can't place the order right now because it's markets close and observance to Juneteenth day. Uh, but with that being said, this is how you set that specific order. Now, again, you can set this in very different ways where maybe, you know, if you just wanted to set an OCO bracket, you set an OCO, uh, you don't need two of them. You're just, you just, let's say that you already purchased the stock, right? Now you already own it, but you've never used an OCO bracket before. What you can do is then you can just click delete this order. You can change it to OCO, right? So instead of now, because you own it already, let's say that you already own 100 shares, but moving forward, you want to make sure that you manage risk accordingly. Then you just make sure that you have two orders, right? Now you have, okay, at $220 per share, I'm going to lock in profits and that's going to be my first sell. That's going to be my take profits. And then I'm going to have a secondary order. That's going to be a stop. And then again, I just change it right there. It could be a stop, stop limit, stop limit pretty much is it needs to hit that exact price point or you will not sell. A stop just means that it falls or hits that price point and it will sell at whatever the market price is at that given time. Um, so you set the 100 shares, a stop, you set your stop at you know $212 or wherever it is that you plan to manage risk. That's according to your trade plan. You click good till canceled and then you go ahead and place order. And the way that this will look is you will see uh, two limit orders uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, two sell orders. One up there, wherever it is that you place it in this example, Example is $220 per share to take profits and the other one at 212 or whatever it is that you plan to cut losses on and that would be to cut losses one uh, when one triggers uh, or gets filled the other one cancels so that's the beautiful thing about this is that if you are actually someone that is taking time to you know creating your trade plan and that trade plan actually makes sense but you are someone that doesn't do the best with execution or following up with the stock, maybe because of your lifestyle or maybe because of just accountability and discipline. And you think that it would just be in your best interest because you're that bad at managing risk that you're just like, okay, well, when I take the trade, I just want to make sure that my lock in profits or my take profits and my stop loss for risk management are placed at the same time. And when one triggers, the other one will cancel. And that's the beautiful thing about those orders is that you can automate this in the sense that, you know, there, there should be no more excuses on why you no longer manage risk or why you no longer take profits. I do want to remind you that if you use those orders and you leave, leave them good till canceled and then the market either you know falls way above or way below the following day, then you do run the risk of those orders getting filled at potentially different price points if you have, again, like a stop loss and not a stop limit. Um, at the end of the day, I, I still am a, a big believer that well, if you're choosing to hold that position overnight, then you are choosing to take that risk, right? Um, so that's just something to take into consideration. But again, if you want to see the overall definition is that uh, one triggers, the other order is composed of a main order and then a group of sub orders. The example that they give you is assume a client wants to buy stock A. In this example, it was Apple stock. And then you place a main order to buy a thousand shares, right? Of the stock. You set a limit order at $100 per share. And additionally, the client sends two sub orders, just like we showed you, one to lock in profit and when to potentially cut losses. So the first sub order is to sell 500 shares of stock A at a limit price of 120 and the second order is to sell 500 shares at a limit price of 130. So the way that they uh, give you an example of is if you're taking profits you know, uh, in increments as the stock price continues to go up, which again, you could also do this, but the way that I wanted to focus this video on is not just so much on taking profits, but to also be able to take profits and to manage risk. I mean, at that point you could have more than just even two or three orders. You can have four orders where you can have 500 shares that fills, you know, um, to take profits and then another 500 to take the other profits. And then you can still have a stop loss to be able to manage risk in case the trade doesn't go according to plan. My biggest thing that I wanted to preach within this video is that you have or are aware of that there are order types out there where you could pretty much automate whatever trade plan it is that you set for yourself. So now I do not want to hear it where, well, Ricky, I, I don't know why I continue to not manage risk. I only wanted to lose two or 3%, but I lost 15 or 20%. I mean, there should be no more excuses. If you're about to take a trade, you should have a trade plan. And if you're not doing that already, then that's your first problem. You, you need to be self-aware. 
The second thing is following with proper execution, holding yourself accountable, staying disciplined, and making sure that you actually take profits where you said you wanted to, or you cut losses where you said that you wanted to. There's no reason to be greedy, and there's no reason uh, to be careless when it comes down to no risk management. So I just wanted to make sure that I did my part in making you aware that these order types do exist. The first one that we talked about um, is one, uh, I'm sorry, one triggers the other, and the other one is one cancels the other. A lot of different trading platforms do offer these order types, so it's not just Weeble. So just make sure that you are aware of it. Obviously, I use Weeble, and a lot of the people that follow me use it as well. So I just wanted to make sure that I did my part in making you aware of it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me down below. And again, if you want to download Weeble, especially because you like how it looks, you want to be able to watch my videos and do what it is that I'm doing. Um, again, the first link down below, you guys can sign up right now for free. It's commission-free trading. Uh, and the beautiful thing about it is if you use my link, you'll earn up to 12 free shares when you sign up with at least a $5 initial deposit and I earn one free share. So I appreciate your time. I hope that earned your thumbs up. Uh, please consider subscribing. And like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take care team.